In this video, our focus is going to be on creating animated textures. So um, there's probably a lot of different um, applications for this. Um, a lot of times it's if you have a single object or a combination of objects that need to stay as a group and you have a single texture on there um, and you want that texture to change in some way over a certain period of time. Particularly something that's uh, going to be used in a game um, where you want to have as few textures as possible. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. Let's create something um, simple for this and I'm going to create a polygon cylinder to start off with. So this would be kind of like a base object and it doesn't matter how big it is I've got my, if I bring up my attribute editor I've got mine set to a radius of, let's just go 5 even and a height of 0.5 and subdivision axes of 20 so um, what I'm going to do is create a single light on this object and then I'm going to um, take it all the way around on each axis. Um, and then that will be kind of the, uh, the light and we'll combine the entire object and create a texture for that to, uh, to animate each light on and off individually. So uh, let's start with creating, I'm going to go to wireframe, hit 4 on the keyboard. I'm going to create another cylinder. We'll act as kind of a base for the light. So let's go, doesn't matter here, we'll go about like this big. I'm going to make it big enough so that you can see the light. And I'm going to move it so that it's down below. Let's look at it from a side view. I'm going to put all of my orthographic views in wireframe. Zoom in on this object here. And that will work for the base. Now let's go ahead and create the light itself. So I'm just going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'm not too concerned with exact Portions. Oops, let's just scale it in here. So as long as you have something that looks similar to this and it fits in the middle. So this could be, you know, some type of little LED type panel light or something like that. Um, what I want to do with this is create a, um, a texture for each one of these pieces. So this is going to be basically like a piece of metal. This is going to be like a piece of plastic that covers the light. Um, and I want to have all of these UV'd. So I'm going to UV this one first so I don't have to do it for all of them. And then duplicate that around. So let's first um, set this up. We'll reduce some of these polygons just for good practice. I don't need the ones that are on the bottom. So let's go to face mode and let's get rid of these. Probably easier just to paint. <laughs> go ahead and get my paint brush set up the right size and we'll just go zoom across, delete those. And then I'll do the same thing to this piece here which you can see on the bottom side. Let's go to face. Alright. So I'm going to move this down right on top of that object and let's go ahead and get this centered and um, onto a point on the surface of this larger object. So I'm going to first, uh, before I scatter them around, I'm going to combine these two just by grouping them. I'm not going to combine the mesh, but I'll group them into one piece and then I'm going to modify center pivot so I can see where that is. Now, what I want to do is line it up with one of these edges. So I'm going to move it in the X direction, but I'm going to hold V while I do so. And so I'm going to grab the X arrow and I'm going to move my cursor over this point right here and it'll align that object to that point. So now I know that that object is centered directly on that line. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to UV this circle. So I'm going to bring up uh, my modeling menu, go to UV, 
I'll bring up the UV editor, and mine comes up in a different monitor, so let's bring it over here so you can see it. Oops, didn't mean to dock it. There we go. And I'll set this up so you can see it. So here are the default UVs for this, and you can see there's no circle down here because I deleted the bottom of the cylinder. This is default cylinder UV set. Um, what I want to do is get these to line up correctly. Now I know this is fine because I haven't changed any of this, but uh, this one here is a little off because the object isn't that long. It's not that tall. So instead of actually UVing them, I'm just going to take this and bring it up like this. So it's pretty much where it needs to be. Um, we're just going to use a solid texture on this, so I'm not really concerned. But if you're going to use something uh, more intricate, definitely go through and, and do a cylindrical wrap around this uh, and a planner map across the top. Make sure everything is lined up properly. Um, but I'm going to select, I'm going to hold, sh um, hold control in my right mouse button and select two UV shells so it selects that little chunk. And I'm going to place this um, vertically. I'm going to place it like this. Uh, actually, let's, let's stick with where it was. No, let's do this. <laughs> All right, and the reason for that is because when we animate the texture, I'm going to have the animation going from bottom up. So the light, the bright part of the light, will start here and work its way up. And as it crosses over the UVs, it'll light up each one that it touches. So I'm going to shrink each one of these. I should have at least 20 of these in a circle. So I want to make sure I've got enough room for 20 of the 20 of these UV maps. Um, in this square in one direction. So you can see we've got 10 squares going up. So I'd want to be able to squeeze two into each of these squares. So let's, let's shrink this down. I'll take the whole group here. Let's, let's grab this one by itself and I'm going to scale it down. It's about the same size as the piece next to it. And then we'll scale it down so two of these will fit in one box. I'm going to move this one at the very bottom. This will be the first one. It doesn't matter where you put it. Let's put, just put it in the middle. And scale it down just a little bit more so I have enough space there. All right. So there's the first one. Now I'm going to close this. The important thing was that that piece is now... Uh, UV. So the next step is now we've got UV. Let's take this object and make it go all the way around the uh, sphere here. So we'll do a, a duplicate special and rotate it around the axis. And I'm going to use I'm going to grab the the group that we created earlier. So I'll go back here to you um, outliner and you'll see here's our group. I could rename it. I'll double click on it and just call it light group. And um, with the light group selected, I'm going to go up here into a top view and I'm going to move my manipulator tool so that it's centered in the middle of this big cylinder here. So I'll hold D and I'm going to hold V at the same time and grab just this um, Z axis arrow and snap it to the middle of the, the circle, the sphere here. And I know from my um, from my attribute editor that this cylinder, the first one that we created, had 20 um, segments. So if you need confirmation, you can count each of these segments that are going along. You'll find there are 20 of them. So we need to figure out how many, um, you know, if we're going to have one on each segment, that means they're going to be evenly spaced all the way around this, this cylinder. Um, and if we need 20 of them, they're going to have to go 360, so we have to divide 
uh, 360 divided by 20, we end up with 18. So it should be 18 degrees in between each one of these. So let's go to Edit, Duplicate Special, and Option Box. Always go to Edit, Reset Settings, because whatever you did last time will be still in there. And let's choose under Rotate. We want to rotate around the Y axis, and we're going to rotate 18 degrees. And we want 20 copies. We want 20 objects total, which means we already have one, so we just need 19 more. So in number of copies, we'll put 19 and hit Duplicate Special. And now we've got all of those pieces um, evenly spaced around that object. Quick and easy way of doing that. Now, the trick is we got to take each of these and we have to realign um, their UVs in the UV map because eventually we're going to we're going to combine all these as a single mesh. So we want to make sure that each one of them has um, the UVs in the proper space. So I need to bring up the UV editor again. And so uh, let's see, the first one, let's see what the first one, that's the first one I have selected. So the next one, I'll go to the right and just go counterclockwise. Um, if I go over here, I'm going to choose the UV map, hit W to move it, and I'm going to move it to the second, the upper half of this first square. So if we look at this now, if we select both of these, I'll select the first one and the second one, they're side by side. So the third one, right click, UV, select them all, hit W to move, and this one will go in the bottom half of this square. And I think you can kind of see, if I go back and shift select the first two, where we're going with this. So what I want to do is evenly space each UV map in so that I end up with a line going all the way up. And I should be able to get all 20 of them in this square. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to pause the video. And if you want to go ahead and do that, go ahead and I'll come back when I get this completed. Okay, so I'm all done. It took me about two minutes to do all that. And if, um, if I select each one of these, here I'll just shift select each of these nodes and you'll see them popping up here on the, um, the UV editor. In order, each one evenly spaced. Whoops, that one wasn't quite there. Let's, let's fix that one a little bit. And I might have to just do this. And it's important that they're evenly spaced, or fairly evenly spaced, because we want to move the graphic even, you know, at the same speed across here, so you don't end up with a whole bunch of changes. Uh, let's just continue on from there. That one might need to come down just a little bit. But. And that's pretty good. Um, maybe move a couple of these. All right, so we've got them all in a line. So I'm going to move this off to the side. Let's now take these lights, and we're going to select each one of them and then we're going to combine them as a single mesh. So let's take this and I'm going to go up to the mesh um, option and go to combine and now we've got a single piece that has um, its own UV map. So I'll zoom out here and I'm going to save this UV map um, as a s screenshot that we can take into After Effects. So I'm going to click on that again, make sure it's in object mode, go to UV Editor, Image, UV Snapshot. And I'm just going to make this fairly, um, let's go, we'll keep it at 2048 by 2048. Um, find a place to save it and then hit Apply. Okay, so I named mine Animated Light Texture. I'm going to make it a PNG. I get a transparent background, and I'll just leave it at 2048 by 2048, and hit Apply and Close.
So we've got a snapshot of that. As for the rest of this object, if you want to just put in a a simple shader with you know a color to it, that's fine. Or you can UV it and texture it however you want. But the main focus is just getting these lights to work, and so that's what we're going to focus on now. So with the texture now, and I have that snapshot, let's open that up in After Effects. All right, so here we are in After Effects. Now I'm going to take you through the steps of creating the composition. It will be a little bit different than what we normally do um, in After Effects. Because we typically are working with video size projects. So um, let's start off here by going to the top where it says Composition, and we'll choose New Composition. And I'm going to call this composition um, Animated Lights. And I'm going to choose the size that we need. So this is the size that the texture is, which would be, in our case, let's unlock the aspect ratio, but in our case it would be 2048 by 2048. So we're not worried about typical video size, we're worried about texture size. Pixel aspect ratio should be set to square. Frame rate of 30, that's what we're working in in Maya scene as well. And the duration of this, um, I just want one loop for this animation. Um, so so we'll just go with, uh, imagine this little object of light sequencing around in circles. Let's just make it happen in a, a two second loop. So I'm going to go in here, and we'll go from 10, let's just go 5. I'll go 0, 05, and that just gives us some a little more timeline to work with. And I'm going to work with a background color of black. So hit OK. And now we have our composition. You'll see it in here in the project window. It opens up the timeline down here, and we have our 2048 by 2048 texture. So the next thing is we wouldn't see um, the actual UV layout for this texture. So let's right click in the project window, go import file, and go browse, go to week 13 videos, animated texture, there's my UV map. I'm just going to import it, and I'm going to drag it down into my timeline. So here's what that looks like, and I could zoom in a little bit here. Um, and there it is. So what we want to do is we want to take a texture that starts at the bottom and works its way all the way to the top, and then we'll loop that in Maya um, to go over and over and over. So a two-second animation, you're looking at about 60 frames uh, of animation there. And I say two seconds just because I want it to go fairly fast, but not too fast. Of course you can always adjust that. So what we want to do next is um, create the actual texture. So this is, should be pretty simple. I'm just going to create a, um, a graphic of uh, a color, let's say red, and I'm going to feather out the, the left and right side of it. So let's create a shape. And for a shape, in After Effects. Let's go ahead and create a new shape layer right here. So go to Layer, New, and Shape Layer. And you see it gives me a layer right here. And what that does is allows me to create a shape. So I've got these um, rectangles and ellipses. If I didn't use the shape layer, it would assume that this is going to be a mask. So I'm going to use a rectangle and I'm going to create a fill color of red and I'm not worried about a stroke on this so I'm going to select it and say uh, I just clicked on the name stroke hit the little box with the red line through it to get rid of it and let's draw let's draw this out it doesn't matter where I'm just going to put it all the way across And let's zoom in on what we've got here. So I'm going to hit uh, H for the hand tool, and then scroll in to see what we're looking at. Now I'm going to place this underneath my UV texture. So I'm going to come in here to the, um, the timeline, the layers, and I'm going to drag it down below there so I can see exactly what I'm doing. So right now, the width of this 
this red shows that it's going to hit a full light plus part of another light. Well, let's just keep it at that for the time being, and uh, and we'll see you know if that's the look that we want. We might want uh, one light completely on while the other light in front of it is starting to come on, and the one behind it is starting to go out. So essentially, I think the the easiest way to do that is to create um, a blur on this shape. So let's um, with the shape selected, let's go up here to Effect. And we'll go to Blur, and let's uh, let's put a uh, Gaussian blur. And you'll see um, when you apply an effect, you we were in this project window here, and immediately the effect controls come on up here. So you can go in here to adjust it or you can go down here on the timeline and you'll now see an effects option. And if you drop that now we can see a Gaussian. And you can adjust um, that. Now it says in here um, do you want the blur dimensions to be horizontal and vertical? We really just want it to be vertical. And now I'm going to scroll this out and see, you can see how it's affecting that light. And I kind of want a fairly large blur, which means I also need to expand and grab this shape. And I'm going to expand the size of this shape. So I'm going to go up here to my arrow tool, and I'm going to click on, oops, click on the shape. And as I expand it, now you can see, I'll make it a little bit bigger. So now you can see I've got one light here that is completely lit up. And the one ahead of it is just starting to light up, and the one behind it is starting to go away. So I think that's the kind of look that I'm after. So I'm going to leave the blur at that amount. Now, let's zoom out a little bit. What I want to do next is I want to adjust the shape as a whole. We need to animate this shape. So instead of grabbing the little tool or the little things here, what we want to do is grab the entire shape. I'm going to start it at the bottom so none of them are affected by this. Let's zoom in make sure that um, there's a little bit of red showing up right there. So I'm going to move it down just a little bit. So we want to animate this going from here to the top over a two second period. So let's open up the shape layer. I can close up the effects and for position I'm going to hit the little time timer over here. And what that does is it sets the keyframe on frame one. Now I'm going to make this pretty simple. I'm going to scroll out so I can see everything here and I'm going to move my playhead to two seconds and I'm going to move the shape off the top not at the very not here but above it so it goes completely through and when I moved that you can see because the time timer was on over here it automatically placed a keyframe on that spot so let's take a look at what that'll look like. If we zoom in, um, you can see I, I gave myself five seconds here on the timeline. Let's grab this little blue handle and move that all the way in. And this will tell it this is where I want the animation to actually stop. So I'm going to zoom in all the way and make sure that is the spot. And that's it. You can snap it right to where your playhead is. Now let's do a quick play-by, see what this looks like. So I'm going to go over here under Preview and hit Play. It went on to the other side. Let's go back. So hit Play, and that's how fast it'll go. So, um, so that gives you a pretty good idea of how this texture is going to look. Now let's go ahead and close, uh, stop that, and we want to save this out as a texture. So obviously the first thing we want to do is get rid of the, uh, the, um, the wire frame. And we'll go up here, and instead of deleting it, I'm just going to turn it off so we don't see it, because we may want to come back to this later. Um, 
All right. So the next thing is we want to animate, or we want to we want to render this out, and we won't render it out as a movie file. What we're going to do is render it as a, an image sequence. So here's what we do. I'm going to make sure my timeline is is highlighted by just clicking in it. Then go to composition, add to render queue. This pulls it up here in um, in my well where the timeline was. You'll see the render queue, and these are the areas where you want to select. How are you going to export this animation? So the first thing that we want to do, um, as as usual, we're under render settings. Let's hit best settings. I want to make sure quality is set to best. Um, Resolution is full, so it should be 2048 by 2048, and it should be 30 frames per second. Just to double check. So hit OK if that's all right. Then under output mode, um, we want to click on the lossless. We want to choose the format. So I'm going to choose, instead of a typical video format, we're going to choose something like a JPEG sequence, get a Targa sequence. I typically go with the Targas. Go with a PNG if you need an alpha channel, but we don't need that. So I'm going to go with the Targa. And I'm going to leave it at the 24 bits and hit OK. Any other things that you might check, just make sure it's RGB. That's pretty much all we need here. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, where it says output to, you'll see a little different file name than you're used to. So let's go ahead and click on that file name. And you're going to want to select an area to save this to. And so I went into my folder. I'm going to create a new folder in here just for this sequence. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it animated lights sequence. And the important thing here, this is going to be the actual file name. Um, in order for this to work in Maya, we have to change this underscore that goes between the last letter of the name and the bracket that encloses these number signs. Um, we have to change that underscore to a dot. Um, otherwise, it will not recognize that as an image sequence. So change that to a dot, and then we can just hit Save. And now we can hit the Render button, and it will render this out. So I'll hit Render. And there you go. Once it's done, you'll hear a little bleep. And now... If I bring over my browser window, you'll see here, here's my animated lights folder. I go inside and there are my 59 images for this sequence. And you can see they're all named properly. Those pound signs that you saw turned into numbers and that's really important that you have those and the dot before the number. So now that those are finished, we're going to open up Maya. We'll go back to the scene in Maya, and we'll, I'll show you how to apply this as the actual texture. All right, so we're back in Maya. So what I want to do is I haven't applied a shader to these uh, lights yet, so I'm going to first right-click on them. I'll do it up here so you can see a little bit better. Go down to Assign New Material, and let's just assign something simple. I'll start with a, a Lambert. You can choose anything you want, but let's just start with a Lambert. And I'll call this the Lights. Uh, let's just go Underscore Material. And what we need to do is we need to bring that f those files, that sequence file, in here as the color channel. So we're going to go to Color Channel, click on the little checkerboard box. We're going to select File because we, you know, these are files. So we'll go ahead and select File, and now let's browse for that. So we'll go to Image Name, click on the little File folder, and go to the place where you saved it. Okay, so here we are in my folder. What we want to do is we want to select the first file 
of the sequence, so file 0, and um, we'll hit open. And to get it to read the rest of them, go down a couple spots here where you see Use Image Sequence and turn that on. Now, one thing you see here is this image number 285. Um, what I accidentally did was I include this with my timeline all the way on, on frame 285. So I'm going to uncheck that real quick. And let me go down to my timeline. I'm going to move it to frame 1. And then I'm going to go back in here and choose image sequence. So you see image number now on image number 1. Okay, so that's pretty much what we have to do at the moment. Let's go back, and I'm going to move this off to the side. And you see here, nothing shows up because I need to turn on my textures in the viewport. So I hit 6 on the keyboard, and we should be able to scroll, scrub the timeline, and you'll see the red skip across. But then it stops. Once it gets past frame 60, it goes to gray. So what we need to do is tell it to continue to loop that sequence around throughout, throughout the timeline. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the attribute editor. So uh, I'm going to select the object, right click, go to material attributes. That brings it back up in the attribute editor. I'm going to go into that color channel where we place those sequence. And right down here where it says image number, uh, I'm going to right click in the purple box. So right click and I'm going to, in the pop-up, select the edit expression option. And this brings up the expression editor. In this expression editor, if we go down to the bottom where it says the expression, you should see something like this, file1.frame extension equals frame. In order to get this to loop, just click in after here and we're going to put a percent sign and then we're going to type in how many frames we want it to go. So I'm going to go 59 because there's 59 images here. I'm going to go 59 and and at the bottom here, I'm going to hit Edit, and that's what will save this new information. So hit Edit, then we can close this, and now we can replay the animation. So I'm going to make sure I'm on frame 1, and I'm just going to hit the Play button over here. And as you can see, it is continuing to loop. Now, there's a little pause right here where the object goes back, so I might go back into After Effects and just play around with... Uh, with the red box and make sure it comes back quick enough and starts you know a more of a seamless transition in fact one of the ways you could do that is probably just create two one that um, starts as the other one is ending on the timeline and that would help kind of fix this little um, spot right here but uh, otherwise that is how you would do the texture now if you wanted to make this an actual light what I would do is put the same image sequence, I'm going to go back to frame 1, open this up in the attribute editor, and apply the same image sequence to the incandescence or the ambient color channel. So we could do that real quick. Go to File, Browse for File 1, go back to I Use Image Sequence, and we'll make this one, we'll have to make this one do the same uh, looping effect, so 59. If you don't do it, then it'll stop and the lights will go out. So let's close that. And you won't see anything really different here, but you will notice that if you render oh, it, it's brighter. And there you go. Now lastly, if you wanted to animate something, you could take all of these pieces here. I'm going to go ahead and grab these frames around the lights. And attach them. I'm just going to make them part of this overall piece. So mesh combine. Then I'm going to select these. I'm going to shift select the big cylinder and hit P. 
key to parent those to this cylinder. So now we could animate if we wanted to. I'm going to keyframe this object. Now we go up, keyframe it, come down. Let's go up and down with it a little bit. And I'll have it end up in the same spot on frame 300. So it's kind of a loop. And now we've got our animated texture applied to an animated object. And there you go.